doing the Taiku Sake! Okay. So. Got a sake here, 15% Taiku. Happens to be the world's best tasting sake! So, Taiku Sake. We got some awards on the cover. And this is the Jinmaya Jingo. Yeah, that's 40%. Uh, between 40 and 50% uh, of the polishing of the rice grain away to, I guess, uh, get to the to the goods in the center of the rice kind of thing. So this is a 40. Uh, this is over 45% of the grain polished away. This is 23 dollars for this bottle. Uh, so I want to try something a little bit higher end than the Gekiakin or however you pronounce that that I've had before. Like I believe I said 15% alcohol. This is the super premium Jinmaya Jingo. Better shot of the bottle here. They have different color bottles for their different grades of sake and stuff. So this is a product of Japan, produced in Japan, but it's bottled in uh, Rochester, New York by Taiku Sake. So maybe they should put over larger vats or something. So, um, I haven't drank a whole lot of sake, so I'm not a real big authority on sake, but I figure, what the hell, you know? There's only one way, you know, to learn about it, I guess, is to actually try some. Not a little bit, but not a whole lot. So it smells, it smells pretty good. Uh, getting a bit of booziness, kind of a thicker, kind of, uh, rice paste smell, I guess you could call it. There's a little bit more to it, a little bit of fruitiness, a little bit of pear... Uh, possibly something like that. Like a very light colored fruit pear. Maybe one of those, uh, what do you call them? Weird apples that are white. Asian pear. Is that what they're called? It's a, it's a very nice well balanced smell amongst the alcohol and the other and the other aromas going on here. Of course the color is almost perfectly clear like water but it does have a slight greeny kind of yellow going on. But definitely uh, clearer than 99% uh, of your white wines. So, you know. Okay, a little bit of fruitiness. Uh, straightness and booziness. Uh, a lot of thick kind of... Not too syrupy. It's not real thick, but it's thick enough to give it a nice smooth, watery uh, mouthfeel. On the aftertaste, you're getting uh, what I believe to be the koji spores, kind of a moldy uh, dankness. And then a typical, like, open fermented uh, flavor in the very finish of the aftertaste. Um, but all in all, like, those, are, those flavors might sound real bad, but uh, now the koji spores are a little bit, uh, they're probably the worst flavor, in my opinion, in the beverage. Um... I know there's different types of koji spores they can use and stuff, and so depending on the type of sake, maybe that will be less present or more present, depending on what you're after kind of thing. Yeah, very boozy, uh, kind of up front, but... Uh, not overly though. It's not a very harsh beverage. Uh, the way people talked about sake being so high in alcohol, I almost thought it was like a distilled thing. And it, a lot of it does have um, alcohol added into. Whether this one does or not, I'm not. I'm not 100% certain. When you're buying your sakes, you may want to check into that. It's kind of like I don't know, um, just like some fortified wines and stuff. Kind of like sherry. They probably jack that shit up with a lot of alcohol half the time. So. Or maybe all the time. I think it's like 20%. I guess I'd have to, eh? I mostly just drink beer and wine. But this is like basically technically beer, I guess. It's, it, what, so what they say is it's made with rice, which is a grain. Uh, the starches are converted to sugars. Uh, much how you would malt barley by sprouting it. That That's the... 
that's what initially changes most of the starches into sugar and then also by mashing it it just kind of furthers the process and by and by um kilning your 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 barley when it's wet it also creates a mini mash inside the grain which creates your crystal malt and if you've ever uh, tasted crystal malt it's actually like candy it just car it literally caramelizes so uh but they do that with koji spores to convert the rice starch to sugar the same way you would sprout your barley, which is referred to as malting. So it's pretty pretty similar. Like I said, this is laid out kind of, it looks dry, it's just like damp, you know, on the table and they do that. Much like, much like malting. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's the alcohol kind of mixes very well with like a like a subtle fruit flavor, and the finish. It it almost comes off once you get to the aftertaste, almost a little bit like I don't want to say licorice exactly, but it kind of has that heat and that kind of intensity. But then as the aftertaste moves forward, you're getting koji spores, you know, mold basically. So. uh it's a good tasting beverage. I think I'd, I'd rate this as just as an alcoholic beverage. I actually like it. I think it would be at least around a 9 out of 11. Yeah. So um, that's pretty good. As for sake, it's probably lower than that, I would imagine. that uh, You know, $1,500 sake, bottle of sake, should taste better than this one, I would hope. Or, if you, or you know, you might want to find a better way to spend your money. Mm. So, uh, this is actually above the price point I pay for wine um, at twenty three dollars. I I typically don't. I think the highest I went is like I might I maybe went a little over twenty dollars maybe on one, a couple of wines I've done, but generally it's right around twenty, like or, or less. Really, it's between eight dollars <laughs> and twenty because you can pick up some pretty kick ass wines for like fourteen bucks or eleven bucks even, you know. If you just know what variety to get from where. Um, yeah, but this is definitely worth it. It is a much smaller bottle as well. So, sake, I guess if you want to get the certain stuff, it's going to cost you. How many milliliters is this? 330. This is, it looks like quite a large bottle, but this is only 330 milliliters. So this is, um, what's that, about the size of a bottle in Newcastle? That's not, uh, it's 15%, but still, 23 bucks. Mm, got about an Imperial Stout, you know. Got about a couple Imperial Stouts in, um, in, in like, 600 milliliter bottles. <laughs> so. Yeah, so I'd say somewhere around a 9, just as alcoholic beverages, but, uh, because I'm not a sake authority, so you can't really take my sake rate too seriously. Yeah, but it's definitely a good it's a good beverage. You can get the Gekiakin and like the real lower ones for about seven bucks, and that's up here for uh, for a bottle of sake for a much larger bottle actually. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I I I didn't mind that one either, really. You know. But it, it's it's pretty mild as far as, uh, you know, this isn't like a liqueur or anything, really. It kind of is, but it doesn't have the, like, it's not like drinking Kahlua or something. Quite mild, much milder than, than most, uh, all, almost every, all wines, really. Yeah, 